Hello, welcome to Country Stitchers. I'm Liz. Hi guys, I'm Deb. It's been two weeks. I know. This is hard to get for me to get used to this two week schedule now. We've done it every <laughs> week for so long. Um, but it's coming up on Christmas I too. Know. Too fast, way too fast. I'm sure everybody feels that way. Before we see you again, it'll probably be Christmas. Uh, I know. Well, it will be. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Wow. Oh man. Yeah, it's going so, too fast. We'll open up with a very big Merry Christmas. Yes. And thank you for tuning into our channel. Um, We'd like to make sure we thank everybody, all our viewers, yeah. um, all of the designers that make our craft possible, our other floss tube friends, yeah. um, and our local needle workshops. Yeah. Everybody. Everybody, yes. Yes. So, yes, it's been a busy two weeks. Um, I wanted to start off with saying a huge thank you. In the last video, I went a little, let you know how much I loved a certain pattern. <laughs> and man, the love that I got back from you guys I, it's so sweet. I can't even express to you how sweet. Um, I was sent the pattern not once, but twice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, so sweet. Um, Suzanne and Karen, thank you so much. Um, and I actually talked to Karen via email and um, she wanted to send it as a surprise and it was also my birthday last yeah. week. So when I, when I got it, it was just awesome and special. Um, but I talked to her and you know, I didn't know since now I had two. Um, what she wanted, you know, to do with it, and um, she said she would love for you to stitch it. Oh, fun! So you get to stitch one, I get to stitch one. Thank you, Karen. And the really cool thing is, um, so it comes with Ada, but I wanted to stitch it on linen. I want to stitch it on forty count linen. But Liz, you you said then that you'll stitch it on. Yeah, I can stitch it on. Ada. You stitch it on Ada. What she didn't say was that I also found a pattern but I bought it as a pattern. And she got a message about getting the kit. So I was figuring I had to go kit this. Ah. This is fun. <laughs> so cool. Yeah, Suzanne got a hold of me right, pretty much right after our video and she, she had had this in her stash and thought she was gonna stitch it. I mean, she even put floss on the cards. Oh, cool. The, yeah. And she, she did put a couple stitches in the Ada, um, but she just thought, mm, yeah, I'm not gonna get to that. And, she just saw how much I wanted it and just wanted to pass it along. Neat. So that's great. And she even put a few stitches in the Ada that she sent along with this. So instead of not using that or getting rid of it, because she started in the middle, so there's like a tree kind of done, I was thinking of, of maybe filling out and finishing an area of it and then making it an ornament and hanging it on the tree. Oh, that cool. way it's part Suzanne and it's part me. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of neat idea. Because I mean, she already put a few stitches in. You could put like a little like some berries on the tree or yeah. make or it make it wintery. It's, yeah, it's this one Is right it? here. Yeah, that she started. Oh cool. So I don't know. I thought that would be kinda cool yeah, to would. do that. And neat idea. Save her stitches. Yeah. <laughs> so I just want to say Save thank you so much. Stitches. People were finding the pattern on eBay for me. I mean yeah, there were a lot of links to eBay. Yeah, thank you so Boy, much. eBay doesn't save you any money anymore though, does it? No. I don't go on eBay as much as I used to. No, no, but I just, thank you, thank you, thank you. So much for your kindness. It was overwhelming, thank you. So sweet, so sweet. And she mentioned birthday. I just want to say we have a new stitcher. Um, there was a young lady born to our viewer, Maria Smith, her first granddaughter on oh. your birthday. <laughs> December 7th. Aww. Is her name Debbie? Did she name after me? <laughs> she didn't pass along the name. I think when she text, when she emailed me, Aww. it was like, I just got this news. And, oh my um, gosh, yay! So she, seven pounds, two ounces, 22 inches long. She said she thinks she's gonna be tall. Um, so congratulations, That's Maria. That's awesome, congratulations. And I said, oh, a new stitcher. She said, yeah, I guess I'm gonna have to get a beginner kit. Oh, <laughs> that is so but, cool. That's awesome. Yay, that's awesome. Yes. yes, I had a great birthday. It felt like it went on for a few days, which is always fun. Um, we had fun on your birthday. Yes, but it started on, well, Tuesday, I think it was, when I first opened this. And then um, Wednesday, then I worked, and it's always fun at work. Um, I've worked at the same salon now for 27 years, and so my clients are like family now. You know, it, it, it's we don't have walk-ins, they're all appointment only. <laughs> So they've been through everything with me over the years, and that was a lot of fun because we celebrated at work. And then um, Thursday, Liz and I got together and actually got to go to our local LNS yeah. and hang out and had lunch. And yeah, we actually did that Friday on your birthday. Wait, oh yeah. yeah. So Thursday, oh, Matt took me out for the day Thursday. Mm -hmm. That's right. That, that was, was your 
day away. Yeah, that was fun because it was all a surprise and we left in the morning and um, we went to a cafe first and got to, you know, catch up and chit chat and then he took me to Colombia because they have supposedly, well not supposedly, it is, <laughs> he heard about, it was the best um, antique shop in Lancaster County, like voted number one. Wow. So we went there to Columbia and um, oh my gosh, it was this huge warehouse, three stories. It was awesome. We were there right when they opened, but we had to unfortunately leave at 12.30 because he had lunch reservations across the river. And we still weren't done. We still were not finished with that warehouse. Yeah. Then we go over and we have lunch. On our way to lunch, we pass like three other warehouses that are, an say, big an you know, antique signs. I had no idea that all of that was in Columbia. So well, Columbia, for those of you who aren't familiar with this area, is not far from here. Maybe nine miles as the crow flies to get there. It's right on the river. Yeah, it, it it's takes, a very small community. Well, actually, it's not that small anymore. It's growing. Yeah. But it's where the Turkey Hill factory is. Yes. If anybody's familiar with that. But anyway, um, we had a great time. Then we left there, and we we actually ate really quickly because I wanted to check out one more antique place before we left. So we had like 40 minutes in there. Um, again, uh, didn't even scratch the surface. I can't <laughs> wait to go back. It was so much fun. Um, then we left there, and we went to Sight and Sound. To, he, we went to see the, the Jesus show at Sight and Sound. Um, then we left there and we went to dinner to one of my favorite Italian restaurants that I have not been to in a long time. Then we left there and we went to a place, a dessert place in Lancaster that has Stroopies, which I've discovered lately and I love them. Oh my gosh, they're fantastic. So we had our Stroopies and- Did you eat them the way they tell you to, to lay it on top of your coffee and let it warm and steam before you eat it? Guess how I ate it. Like right now. No, no, with a side of ice cream. <laughs> 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 Nothing warm about that. <laughs> no, but it was good. <laughs> I don't care how you eat a stroopy. It's awesome. Oh my gosh. So, and then I brought some home. So I have some here to eat too. But that was fun. I had a, I had a very good birthday and it was a lot of fun. It's always fun to have a, well, when I was younger, I wanted a birthday in the summer because I wanted it to be warm. And, but now I like it. I like it at Christmas time. I have a summer birthday and I didn't care yeah. for it because all my friends were home for the summer. I didn't get to be around oh, my friends at school. So yeah. I always thought it'd be cool to have a birthday during, during the school, school year. That's true. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Yep. Yep. Now it doesn't matter me yeah. when it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Having one at Christmas time, it feels like everybody's decorating for you. Yes. <laughs> yes. Oh, it must would be they? like that. Well, with 4th of July, same thing. Oh, yeah. those fireworks are just for me. <laughs> yep. All right. Well, we have some comments. Mm -hmm. Um, so, um, Oh man, you know me and my names. Gwenda Severe, Severe, not quite sure. She wants to know where you get your scissor fob kits. Oh, that you do. Okay. Um, those are by Fern Ridge Collection, the ones that I buy already kitted. Um, I have branched out and I now um, design my own. So, but the ones you're referring to, if they were in our earlier videos, those are the ones I got from Fern Ridge Collections. Those I got actually at Salty Yarns okay. um, in yeah. Ocean City, but you can um, go online and I can put a link in our description box and you can order them from Fern Ridge Collections as well. And I think they also have a retail list of stores that sell them. So nice. Okay. I'll make a note of that. Great. Um, so Cammie Tweedy, she wow. wants to know which book is the warmest wishes pattern in that I showed last video. So it is A Better Homes and Gardens, A Cross-Stitch Christmas. It is the Needlework Treasures book. <laughs> and this, just to remind you, this is the pattern, the Warmest Wishes pattern with that awesome log cabin there. All right, so good luck finding that. Let me peek inside there in the front cover. Mm -hmm. The very first page. What year was that one? Oh yeah, I had written it down. I thought it was 2007, but oh, where did I see that? 2003. Okay, that's when it was. 2003. Those of you who yeah. collect it, sometimes it's easier if you're like me. You have them in in collection order or whatever. Yeah. But anyway, that's the reference for you. That's the year that one came out. Yeah, yeah. Needlework Treasures is the name of that. Right. particular issue yes um, all right so um, Davis Kathy she would like to see the cord winder in action <laughs> yes 
We did talk about that. You guys stick stick um, by your videos because um, or your floss tube remote because uh, we're going to do a demo mm -hmm. on how to use those. Um, mm -hmm. And we're going to do it with both versions. You know the the manual version as well as the laces mm -hmm. laces version. Okay, I am not sure how to say Gilsella? this. Yeah, Gilsella, Suski, Gisella. Not sure. Anyway, it's a pretty she, name. It is very pretty. Um, she wanted to help me out with my dry skin, so. She had some, some good ideas. She uses oatmeal soap and then she uses a mixture of olive oil and sugar and makes like a sugar scrub. And I have forgotten about sugar scrubs. That You're right. Um, but then also um, the hibernation stitcher, she's married to a farmer and she loves to use um, utter balm. You get it at, you know, Agway or at one of the farm stores. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna do that. Which I, because, reminded me of bag balm, right. which is what they sell in Maine and all the, it doesn't right. even have to be a farm store up there. You can get them in right. the convenience stores. Right. But I'm next time I go to Grain and Hay, because that's where I get my, I use horse shampoo and conditioner on my hair. So next time I go to Grain and Hay, I'm just going to get that also. So, and that makes sense, because if I'm using horse stuff on my hair, then I should use cow stuff on my skin. Why not? Absolutely. If I start sleeping in the barn, then. I know, know what to get you for yes, Christmas. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I get your blanket. <laughs> yes, yes. But I thought that was clever. I want to try that. Um, Oh, this was so cute. Leanna Larky. She said she loves watching us, and she said even her husband will come in and sit down and watch us. And if she's a little behind, he says we need to watch our girls. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, Thank you. Anyway, I also wanted to say a shout out to him because he's a retired fighter, firefighter. And thank you so much. You know, we hope we never need you, but just like I did need you guys at one point in my life, I am so grateful. I mean, the best sound in the world is hearing those sirens get closer and closer to you when you need help. That was awesome. So thank you so much for um, your service and being a firefighter. Thank you. Um, so I just wanted to say that. What you got? I have a couple of comments from our uh, email. Notice nice glasses. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> we did not plan the um, matching attire, but I did pick these up just because I thought it was funny that they look like Deb's. But I yeah. can't look through them like Deb does because hers are prescription. And yeah. These are just readers, and everything disappears at this point. <laughs> yeah, and they look like mine. In fact, I've been picking them up, thinking that I've been leaving them, and they're not mine. Mm -hmm. That was, and I'll bet you didn't pay a dollar for yours either. <laughs> it wasn't bad though. No, no, I cool. went up there to. Well, anyway, yeah, it wasn't bad. <laughs> Um, Mel is a new viewer and I just wanted to say thank you to her. She said she's had a week long binge watch Ooh, fun. of our previous videos. Gosh, um, you must be sick of us. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, we really appreciate you watching and all of you who have, uh, come to join our channel. And then Terry, um, said something about my stocking stitch kit, um, and I just wanted to thank her. That was in reference to another Fern Ridge collection piece that I did last, I showed it last week was my um, finish, or last video I should say now. Um, and I appreciate that. I do like the Fern Ridge collection a lot. <laughs> um, and then we had a, um, a gift sent. That was your um, kit that came from Karen. And Karen sent me something um, for a gadget, and so I'm gonna let her co host Gadget Corner yeah, today, yeah. and we're gonna use her gadget in <laughs> um, that section of our video. So, thank you, Karen, for um, sharing that with me. And then, uh, flannel jammies, I want to say thank you. Um, yes, we were it. talking about light and dark threads, um, and she uh, I had said, I can't remember, I know there's something about the order in which you stitch it. She verified for me that um, you stitch the dark thread first. No, I got that backwards. See, that's what I did last week. Yeah. You stitch the dark thread last, you stitch your light thread first, and then you're not pulling your light thread through next to your dark thread. Mm -hmm. And it keeps those little fibers from getting onto your white thread and showing up where they're not supposed to. Mm -hmm. So. Exactly what she said in our comments, start with the light, light, light then do the dark. Yes. 
Um, so is that the way you do it or is that just her, is that a different way? No, that's what, remember when we were talking in the video, I said, I know there's something about doing it in the order you do it, but I couldn't remember. Yeah. And I thought it was, she, she's right about oh, okay. what she put there. Okay. Yeah. And I just it wanted makes to sense thank her for saying it. Yeah. You don't want all those dark fibers on your white thread. That no. makes sense. No, I yeah. knew it. Thank you. <laughs> You're right on on that one. And then, um, Leela, thank you for noticing my nail polish. Oh. Yes. I don't often wear it, um, but thank you. I did have that on. Um, I don't do my nails at all. And I didn't get to it in the last couple of weeks. I've been doing the house picking up and decorating and putting away fall and mm -hmm. digging out boxes. And so that was just not happening. I actually had a glove break on me last night when I was doing dark color. So look at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like I have dirt under my nails. I don't. Mm. It's just color. It'll wear off eventually. Um, let's see. We had a comment from, oh, Cynthia, um, who goes to the Jamboree at Salty Yarns had made a comment about the piece we were doing, the needlepoint piece and the colors that we got um, from our Kathy Ray's class. Mm -hmm. Kathy Reese's mm -hmm. did the amethyst garden, but we did the the um, the, star. Sh the small version, the, the blue bonnet star. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to let you know that I got colors with mine because they were picked for me, but Deb, on her birthday, when we spent the day together, um, we kind of touched on that. We went up to our local needle workshops, uh, Stitches Unlimited, and I was looking at their different fibers to see if I could pull my own choice mm -hmm. of colors. So I decided to look at the possibility of doing a Christmas uh, style because I liked the watercolor. And of course, I got home and I was right. I had two other skeins of the Christmas color, but the watercolors I chose to use is a Christmas one. And then I just pulled a neon rays and a silk and an over dyed floss to go with it. And then I picked up a silver for a metallic. I'm not sure exactly where I might use it. Um, I think I'm gonna use it on that outside stitch that border mm -hmm. stitch or some of the back stitching between some of the stitches that's what that'd i mean be pretty. yeah that yeah that's like in through here and in through there that'd be mm -hmm. pretty yeah it's actually yeah that's not the the other version gives you a better picture of that one yeah there you go um mm -hmm. where we were talking about is this outlining section out in here where you have some of that more definite anyway so that's what i did well then i got home having been empowered by the look at all those fibers dug out my bin and was able to put together yet another color scheme with this watercolors I had called Teak. I really liked those as more of a neutral all year round type piece. And I had a Gloriana Plum Silk, it's called Aged Plum. And then I pulled out two cream colored fibers that also go pretty well with those watercolor shades. So I'm going to put together two uh, versions of that. Um, this is going to go in my needlework bin, my needlepoint bin. <laughs> um, you'll see a couple finishes from that today. I finally dug out some things. But anyway, thank you, Cynthia, for um, inquiring about what we were doing with those. And mm -hmm. Deb is to the last part on her border, so hers will be done pretty soon. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Um, I just wanted to um, comment that we had a woman ask us about calculating fabric. Mm -hmm. She saw our app about being able to use it on your phone, but she said there was a way to do it. She knew it and she had forgotten how to do it manually. So I had that all set up to do um, on our last <laughs> video and we finished the video and I looked down and I said, oh, I probably shouldn't have set that on the floor. So I thought I would just quickly go over that while we're doing the comments. Um, I'm going to use some numbers that make it really easy for me to divide this out so that I'm not sitting here scratching my head. But what we're really talking about is needing to know a couple of things. You need to know your stitch count and you need to know the count of your fabric. So you start with your stitch count and I'm going to give it um, 140 
by 280, and you can see why real fast I'm doing that. Okay, so with your stitch count, you're gonna look for two things. You just need your length and your width, and that's what we're gonna calculate here using our stitch count. Um, I'm going to use just a basic 14 threads per inch or 28 threads per inch over two so that it's easy to divide. So the first thing you do is divide your, um, I'm going to go, width and height divided by the 14 um, and we're going to get to our 10 inch and then our height divided by the 14 is going to give us our 20 inch so this is our finished piece we're looking at the stitch count being 140 wide by 280 high divided by your thread count if you're using ADA it's 14 if you're using linen 28 count over 2 it's still 14 mm -hmm. and then you end up with 10 by 20 as your fabric size for your design okay so that's your actual design. And the only thing you have to add to that is your margin. Depending on how you're using it, that can change. Most of the time I would suggest a margin of three inches for almost anything. But Deb and I often do a margin of two inches on each side because we know that we're gonna have either a framing situation or a pillow, and we really don't need much more margin to finish it. Um, so with your margin, you take your 10 inches and your 20 inches, and you add to that, I'm gonna use two inches here. So your total is a four inch margin. So it's going to be 14, 14 by 24 is going to be the size of the piece that you're going to need to stitch on. If you're doing two inch margin. If you're doing a two inch margin. Yes. You can vary that and the reason it's doubled um, is because you do the each addition side. to each side mm -hmm. of the piece. Yeah. Um, so it's very simple calculations. You just need your stitch count and you need your fabric count and then you add your margin. Mm -hmm. So, um, and voila, good to go. Yep. So I would write that on a little business card and stick it in my wallet, um, and then you have it. Yeah. And you're good anywhere. Yeah. So it's just length and width plus margin. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Now I'll feel good. We won't mm -hmm. have to worry about. I hope you're not out shopping for it, and then you didn't have it. <laughs> we can get past that. Um, mm -hmm. We had some time in the last two weeks. I had more time than I have in a while because... I, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we. <laughs> yes. Um, I did because I had some downtime, which was mm -hmm. good. I could be in the recliner and I could add um, some stitch time to that. Um, Deb's been busy. She got her house decorated. You can see that gorgeous tree behind us. It's beautiful. The ornaments, I love to look at her ornaments. Oh, um, she has a tree like our family tree was, which is a collection of ornaments over the years. Everything. And yeah. I love that. It's sort of like yep. a little story. Yeah. Um, so did you work on anything? I Yeah, I did work on my... Oh, wait, can I show them this real quick? Absolutely. I got to show you. Oh, my gosh. I got one in the mail. Yeah. So McKenna did our um, uh, Christmas cards, and I have to show it to you because they got the cutest darn picture out in the meadow of Hank in his Santa hat. Oh my gosh. And it was really cute because McKenna tried to put it on Hank first. He didn't want anything to do with it. He wanted to lick it. He wanted to throw it off his head. He just was not cooperating. Sure enough, Logan gets home from school and she's like, Logan, could you please come out here with me and you know, I want to get this picture of Hank so we can get our cards done. They go out there, Logan's, you know, kissing up on Hank and, and talking to him and everything. And he goes and places the hat right on his head and he's like, Hank, stay still, Hank. Hank doesn't move. He just like poses. And McKenna's busy working with the camera and Logan's going, McKenna, uh, McKenna. She looks and she's like, oh, what? So we got the perfect picture of Hank in his Santa hat. So cute. So this is our Christmas card. Look how adorable he is. And then there's Logan with him and McKenna with him. Look how cute he is in that hat. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. 
And then this is the back of it because this was when she was trying <laughs> to, to get it on his head and he just wanted to lick it. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. So that's our, that's our Christmas card, our hanky. Someone said that he needs a stocking. I didn't even think of it. That's true. He does need a stocking. We can put all his cow treats in it. And um, Well, he doesn't have one yet, but we'll see. <laughs> if you stitch it, I want to see it. <laughs> Santa's got to bring him a, a stocking. Mm -hmm. Darn it. Anyway, that was cute. So what was I talking about? Oh, what did what I you do? Working on. All right. Yes. So um, I'll show you. I did a little bit more work on December 25th, which is Mosey and me. Oh yeah, that reminds me of something. There he is. And this is stitched on 36 count Edinburgh Dirty. It's great fabric. Oh my gosh, it's very, very easy to stitch on. This is what I have finished so far. Now Edinburgh is 36 count? Um, that's what, yeah. Okay. Um, so there he is. Very, very cute. Um, I still have a little bit more to do, but hey, almost there. And then his hat continues on, and we have some snowflakes to fill in. But he's really cute. Once I got finished with that awful beard. Speaking I mean, it's cute. I, I love his awful beard, but... <laughs> last video, <laughs> we had the bunk of brush. Yeah. And I wanted you to know that I actually had my husband go shop for a denture brush mm -hmm. at Walmart. Um, and that's how they came. And it is awesome. So, and I think it was $1.94... So it's a great idea if you want to stick that in your um, finishing supplies. Yeah. Your husband's going to wonder why you're, why you're <laughs> asking for a denture yeah. brush. He did wonder <laughs> if I had that down right. I said, yes, I do. Oh, my gosh. And then um, I brought this out to show you. It's the Christmas Sampler by Jeanette Douglas. Um, you can do it two different ways here. Um, is there an actual? In the back of it has both pictures. Okay. So it's all natural which is the one I'm doing it on, or you can do white winter. So she shows you those. And I want to caution you. I opted for the white winter version. Respect. So when we got this pattern, we both got it at the same time yeah, down, down in Salty Yarns. Salty yarns. Mm -hmm. I wanted the white version. It was a little more contemporary with my style on decorating until I looked at the fibers. The fibers that they use on the white version are all difficult to put your hands on because they all sort of come from Canada. The access commodity or access, yeah, commodities, is that mm -hmm. right? So. And, um, and then they have a lot of silks in them. So if you want to do a, a more straight up DMC over dyed version, the natural is the, the easier choice on fibers. And this one has um, Weeks Dye Works. It has um, silk, um, some Gloriana silk. Um, and then it also has a wool in here. Um, a Weeks Dye Works wool. No, Gentle Art um, wool. And that, so these are all the colors. Plus it has a... Um, the Gloriana is that um, specialty fiber. It's not their actual silk. It starts with an F. What's the name on that one? Um, where here? Uh, they covered it up with the... Luminescence, that's what it's called. It's their luminescence also. Olive um, Grove. Yeah. Um, it's not, it is a silk fiber, but it's it's um, a twisted thread, so you don't actually strand it. There's also some, um, oh, I don't have it with me, the gold, the... Um, Krynic? Yeah, Krynic in there too. So it definitely does have different threads and a lot of different fun stitches. I don't know if you saw that when I was holding it up, but that's that to me is the very fun part of stitching this. Because um, it's not just cross stitch. You're going to have some really fun stitches in there. Um, so this is about, mm, about halfway finished. So that and um, that's about it. Um, I didn't bring what I was actually working on because it was my um, needlepoint Santa chair. Um, and I almost have the bottom cushion done. Oh, okay. I have the trees to do on the sides. I did find, though, that doing that um, kind of aggravated my carpal tunnel. Oh, did it? Yeah, so I ended up having to ice it up at night. But mm. it's just harder to pull that needle through the... Um, it is, isn't it? Through the needlepoint canvas, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, I noticed that with the other needlepoint thing. Yeah, and yeah. I did try going to a smaller needle, and that helped. But still, just that... It's just the heavier 
threads, I think, and fibers yeah. that you use sometimes. Yeah, you yeah. don't notice it until you do yeah. it for a long period of time. Yeah. So that was what I was working on. So I don't, okay. I don't actually have anything I was currently doing. Want to go to finishes? Sure. Okay. I only have one. I just wanted to show you um, one of my needlepoint finishes, an ornament. Um, we had gone to Stitches Unlimited, um, and Pat put this kit together for us. There's the front, and then we have a trim going down the side, and there's the fabric on the back. That was in a cookie cutter series. That's my little guy. Those are cute. <laughs> um, I did, actually, before I show you my finishes, um, I had a couple thoughts while these two weeks are going to be trouble for me because it gives me too much time to think about things. <laughs> but um, I was going back through my Christmas stuff, and while you may have seen these before, I just wanted to bring up a story about them. Um, there is something for my grandma in here, and she did. Her name was Elizabeth Becker. She's got her name on all her patterns. It was really cute. Aww. And this is the folded star ornament. They're done for things from babies to Christmas. There's all kinds of variety in here. But she did a set in 1992 for each of us. But prior to that, she had made us each one when she found the pattern in 1989. And you can tell what the time frame is by the colors. Mm -hmm. This is the 80s and a lot of ribbon. And then, oops, and then this is the 1992 set she gave me. I have actually four of these that I put on the tree. I love the cross stitch and the quilting together. Yeah, that it is, is so neat, isn't it? Pretty. And grandma, I think I'm a little like her. I was named after her, so it would stand to reason. But wow. she, when she passed away, she had in her trunk all of these pieces of fabric. Yeah, you said you brought that back pre -cut. Uh, that, That's right. I yeah. did show it on the other video. Yeah, that's awesome. And it was just unbelievable. So I have a lot to work with if I decide to do some more of them. But yeah. I had to laugh when I was unpacking my Christmas things. I don't think I showed this one. Um, but what <laughs> I really want to show you is yeah. this was in the, the late 19... 80s I found these patterns they were from friendship collection and what appealed to me as a beginning stitcher was oh my gosh look how little stitching there is and there's that <laughs> big button on the middle I can do that really fast and look I have to show you the framing job okay? yeah that's what I was here you go <laughs> <laughs> fold it over and glue it yep but that sits out every year because I am funny. not going to change that no and that is just I looked at that this year and I thought oh how far we come yeah but that's anyway, cool. friendship and it collection still has holds, cute. huh? It does. There it yeah. is. And then this pattern this I ran so across. Pretty. I love this pattern. I was looking for another pattern, and you'll see what I was looking for later. Maybe you guys can help me with it. This but looks so old-fashioned. This my mother did for over her fireplace, um, and it's a just cross stitch pattern. Back when they were publishing. Oh, was it in the magazine? Designs. They actually published their own. I don't know if it was ever in a magazine. Oh. But they would put out their own publications too. I wonder if they ever released it in a magazine. Or, you know. This was their 10 year anniversary collection. Wow. So maybe it was. I wonder. Maybe at some point. That's really pretty. Um, the designer was Angela Pullen. Um, my mother did this on, I believe it was a Klostern that had a metallic finish in it. And she did it while she was going through breast cancer surgery. And she finished it um, the whole thing that year while she had all that time on her hands um, in her recovery and her uh, radiation therapy. And I don't know where it is now. Um, it got away from the family. I don't know if dad uh, let it go at an estate sale oh. or where it went, but. That anyway. was one thing that was so sad in those antique stores, you know. The you, things that were leaving people's families. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I got to buy a, um, a really cool, I showed it to you, remember, the crazy quilt? Mm. And it's so awesome because it's actually a quilt inside of a quilt. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. And the reason why I know that is because the back is ripping, but that's okay because then I discovered all the beauty underneath too. Yeah. So. Oh my gosh, that was so neat. But it was that was kind of hard to see some of those yeah. things, and you think, oh man, somebody put so much time and love into that, and then you see the price mm -hmm. that's on them. And mm -hmm. mm. yeah, um, I did want to show you also um, when you're stitching and you're starting out, you don't know how you want to do things, and you don't want to make big investments. And um, I had shown this little piece that as a 
a way that I was doing the tree. It's a, a JBW design. It's just a little Christmas tree. But I added to it just a little ribbon and a little bow on the outside. You can set that in your kitchen. It won't get splashed. It won't, you know, nothing will happen to it in this little plastic insert. Mm -hmm. um, these, you can pick them up anywhere. Staples, um, Dollar Walmart, Tree. Dollar Tree. Um, and I just thought that was a cute way mm -hmm. to finish something. Real simple. Yeah. Um, and again, you don't have to go to any big extreme to do the finishing. Yep. Then I had this. I picked this up when we were visiting my dad. He was going through his bout with cancer. And I had seen these frames. I was going to put uh, people's pictures in it. And I got home with it and I thought, wait a minute. I had stitched this little Precious Moments piece using light effects threads. It was a sample, sample pattern. And it came with the threads, the collection that I bought. And it was so cute. I put that on my fridge now every year. Mm -hmm. And um, these are so easy to come by. These little um, magnetic pockets. And if you buy them with the little, uh, what would you call it, mat yeah. already yeah. in them, yeah. you just slide it in. So, and that you can change out anytime you want to. Mm -hmm. Which leads me to my next little <laughs> item, which was, I bought these at, I think for sure it was Michael's. They used to have a section, it's now $1.50. It used to be a dollar for anything in the big bins in the <laughs> yeah. front of the store. And Mary Inglebright was always a popular thing for the little magnetic notepads and yes. paper notes mm -hmm. and refrigerator All magnet the tablets. Stuff. And she had these there, their bookmarks. Really nice, sturdy bookmarks. Yeah, they are. With that little insert for um, a photo. And I thought, uh uh, <laughs> no, not me. So you could put a little Christmas tree in there, you could put an initial for somebody you want to give the gift to. But anyway, I had a fun. D in that one. <laughs> or an E <laughs> for Eshelman. <laughs> but what the reason this is out now and I'm showing you now is because I discovered four bins of my Christmas things in the basement last week when I was putting away my fall stuff. Mm -mm -mm. And I had wondered where it all got because mm. I had where would it be? <laughs> I had redone the craft room. <laughs> So many times, and I had started moving things to the basement because I ran out of room, and I forgot it was there because now it's my like husband gets surprised every day. It was. Rick goes up and down the steps. I don't. So there it was. Aww. And then this last little quickie was um, an ornament out of um, just cross stitch, the annual ornaments, and I found that Deb and I went on our first and I think only yard sale trip together one Saturday. 25 cents for the padded frame. And I thought, oh my gosh, <laughs> that ornament will go in there. So mm -hmm. now I just pop this out at Christmas time and mm -hmm. it just, yep. easy peasy. Yep. yep. So you just got to keep watching. It's fun. Yeah. But it is, what I like about those finishes are they're, they're simple. Yes. Yes. And inexpensive. And that bell you just heard is our subscriber tribute bell. Yes. So, um, Today, our two subscriber tribute winners. Um, the first one is Sarah Brown, and you're going to be getting a pattern from Moss Creek Designs. It is a um, shaker needle, needle roll. <laughs> Say that twice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and you not only get the pattern in this, you get the thread that goes with it. Oh, did so. that say Palestrina knots? Uh, hold on one second. Let me show her this, and I'll, I'm not sure. So, Sarah Brown. You can get a hold of us. We will have our contact information in the drop-down screen. Um, here, do you want to get yeah. that? In the, in the video at the drop-down screen. It did. Oh, my gosh. There's a whole host of specialty stitches Ooh, on that. Fun. It's a band sampler needle roll. Yes. And then Carolyn Zook. Can I subscribe? Yes, you can. <laughs> um, and tell all your friends to subscribe. Okay. Why is my phone ringing? I thought I shut that off. Sorry. We have a phone. Yes. <laughs> Surprise, we have a phone. <laughs> okay, so Carolyn Zook, you are going to be getting the 2000 annual ornament um, from the Heart's Content. Oh. This is adorable. I love it. And of course, obviously, put on whatever year you'd like, but look how pretty that is. It's so pretty. That's and different. Very pretty. I, yeah, it's very different. I like that. My so Heart's you, Content, that's. Yeah. yeah. Maureen that's is just Carolyn very talented. Zook. We have a lot of Zooks in this area. Yeah, I that's. I wonder what, where she's from. I, when I. Yeah. When I drew the name, I thought to myself, yeah. that's a popular yeah. name around here yeah, in Lancaster is. County. It is. So thank you very, very much for being subscribers. Thank you. Yes. Um, All right. Okay. 
back to my finishes. Yes. Um, De Deb <laughs> apparently didn't know I had these. I thought I got us both a set, so I'm going to have to go back to the Christmas bin and find out if it's I have another set down there. Down in the basement. There. Yes. <laughs> um, these are blocks that you can insert your stitching into. They're so cute. And you can do, you know, Mary, Joy, whatever. Whatever you have enough blocks to do. Yeah. Um, and they came in little boxes or little bags. I remember buying them in the sale bin in one of the uh, local needle workshops. Cute. Yep, I thought they were adorable. Yeah. So that's, again, another simple idea. And if you didn't have the ones you can insert, you could certainly do that at any local craft store. Mm-hmm. AC Moore, all those places have now little blocks back in their wood section. Yep. You can just do a flat fold. Yep. And attach it to the top. Okay. Now, to a little more serious finishing for me for the week. I finally finished the little strawberry from our class. All I had to do is put the satin bow on the top, mm -hmm. and it's still sitting there. So I pulled that out just to do a little back work. Then I did a few things that were in my Christmas bin. This little guy I love, it's um, from the same type of Deb's little um, ornament from Stitches Unlimited. This was their cookie cutter Christmas tree mm -hmm. series. She showed it in progress last video. Yes, and this video, whoops. Did a little crooked. There we go. Aww. How did you do that? Um, so I finished it and I added some garland, beaded garland and bows to this one. And then I just put fabric on the back. And the reason it's on this little um, swizzle stick, if you will, <laughs> is because I haven't decided yet whether I want to um, close it at the bottom and stuff it and hang it as an ornament or whether I want to put a, a stick in it and put it in a little uh, bucket. Um, we just saw a pattern by Prairie Schooler mm -hmm. that had all these trees done that way when we were at Stitches yeah, Unlimited. And like these little galvanized tin buckets. Yes. Oh my gosh, so cute. Aren't they cute? Yeah. And um, so because I wasn't sure, I just left it open and I, I could show it to you this way. That was one of them yeah. that was done. That was fun. Yes. Um, this one um, came, it's partially a homespun elegance pattern from, I saw it on a friend of mine. Becky Wilder, she has a floss tube video, um, Socks for Mom. She also knits, and she's uh, recuperating from some surgery. And she had gotten together with a guild, and their first ornament kit that they were doing had part of this homespun elegance pattern in it with the Santa and the reindeer. They did it in a kit she sent a picture of, and I thought, oh my gosh, I have to do that. Mm -hmm. They put it in this little... Um, this little watch fob yeah. and then they put the beads in the bottom for the snow and they just put in little evergreens and I just think it's so adorable it is. and it's on 40 count it's over one and I just loved it what a quick easy like just knock it out real quick yep. that's awesome and did you notice that Rudolph has a red nose yes <laughs> so Rudolph cute. had no nose when yeah. I showed it to Deb originally and she goes so you decided not to stitch his nose I said no <laughs> just forgot to put the bead in so Fortunately, he has a he has a nose. I just said, well, maybe he's flying during the day. <laughs> That's a day trip. <laughs> <laughs> this one you might recall was my punch needle project when we did our punch needle video uh, back in the day. I finished Santa. I put him on that little paper mache star that I had. I just painted it gray. I used a Waverly chalk paint. Easy peasy. I also put... Um, an extra step in between my Santa and the fabric on the front. I put on a gray fabric out of um, chipboard, covered it, and inserted it on top of the navy, just as a little border. They used, um, on the actual pattern itself, used a, um, a black cord around theirs on a wooden box, and I just thought the gray was pretty to pull it out. So. That's him. I'm really happy with the way that and turned you show out. show the ribbon? I was right. just thinking when That's I pretty. set it down sideways, I thought, wait a minute. Deb pulled this ribbon out of her stash for me. I was looking for something to finish the edge. And so that just perfectly went with what we did. I just can't get over how you found that star. The I, actual... I know. Dimension of the pattern. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I've carried this star around. I bought this pattern when Dad was in Arizona, so this goes back seven years. Wow. And I found that star when I got back from finding the pattern almost within the same month. I know, that's crazy. 
It is. is so cool. And the craziest part is I remembered where yeah, it was. Yeah, that's true. And I put it in the pattern because there's no way I was going to find it later. That doesn't happen at my house. <sighs> so, oh, man. homespun elegance being the, the same theme. This is... I'll get it. Okay. Bye. This is fun. I have had these little guys stitched. They were um, a paper pattern by Homespun Elegance. And these little guys are stitched. Um, I actually have another card of them that I started. Want me to show now? Sure. Okay. But I, oh, can, I wonder if they could see it all at once. Yeah, from yeah, the yeah, yeah. Back. And then I'll there you go. Um, I just put some pine cone picks in the green, evergreen wreath. And then <laughs> Vanna will point out, <laughs> I added some right. gold, um, what would you call this? <laughs> <laughs> that's like that when you go to a place that's a tourist place take your picture with the wreath. yeah 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 <laughs> um so then um all i did was just put a little bit of an elastic cord onto the ornaments and hooked them onto the pine cones um and it just came out really cute mm -hmm. it's simple let me just show you up close it's yeah, simple pretty. but it's um but i really do like the way it came out oh my yes i was happy with that Now are you gonna hang this up when you get home? I am. All right. Rick said, as my husband, he said, do not put that on the front door. There's no way that's going outside. Aww. The next piece is also a wreath. Um, you might remember back in our Christmas in July, I showed you this piece. It was a dimensions <gasps> kit. Uh oh. It just I had that pinned on. Okay. You got it? Whoops. Yep, I think so. Probably a little. I'll just hold it. Okay, a little tighter because you can't. Oh, sorry. It's, it's um. Yeah, there is you that go. Good? Yep. It was drooping. Okay. Um, this one is, uh, I made it into sort of a sock, uh, almost like a wind sock. I just sewed it in a tube so that I could attach the banner to the wooden wreath. And I happened to have that ribbon in my stash um, that matched the colors. And I really like that finish. It's very, again, mm -hmm. easy, simple. Yeah. Um, but the story is this, I started this kit. My mother worked at a st stitching shop called Country Pleasures in Willow Valley. I remember um, that store. Yep. I love that store. And they had this pattern when I walked in, but they didn't have a model. I said to mom, where's the model? I want to see what it looks like. She goes, they don't have one. But if you bought it and stitched it and you told whoever the person was who owned the shop, she'd probably finish it for you and then you could have it after she put it up. Ah. I said, well, I said, I could try. Well. That was the year I'd moved down here. The kids were two and four, and I worked full time as a single mom. So it didn't go quite as quick as I thought it would. <laughs> I started it when I got it from mom. That was 1991. Oh my goodness. I finished stitching it in 2014. Wow. Yeah, it was a long time. So it's now been four years since I finished stitching it, and now I've got it on something. So. I was happy about that. Yeah. It was about time we knocked that one out of the bin. And it is fun. Now that I have the craft room cleaned up and I have stuff in bins, I can go to the bin that's done being stitched but not finished. And I can pull stuff out and go, okay, now and we'll do this and we'll finish that. Yeah. yeah. And I can mix it up and, and instead of just like a little stitcher, <laughs> never finishing anything, I can get it finished. <laughs> so that was fun. Very cool. And I had one last little finish. Um, your little white. Here oh, yes. Go. I can flip this over. This I have it. No, no, I have it somewhere. There it there is. There you go. Right there. She had a little white paper laid out. Yep. This little guy is another one of my little. Can you see okay? Yeah. Okay. Little fobs. Um, it's done with Delica beads. And this is not actually a kit. This one I designed and had fun with. It's just a little ornament. And I did that one oh, last week, I think. But I did have to wait a little while because I didn't have any of those little pearl beads that look like ornaments to put on the fringe. So, so cute. that was fun. So I had a I had a fun time finishing up some things that were yeah, hanging you did. around. Yeah. Nice. Now you just have to get your house decorated. Yeah. <laughs> I did take the fall <laughs> stuff down yesterday. I got that far. That's when I discovered some of the new Christmas stuff that had been down there for three years. So we're getting there. Mm. Yep. Um all right. We get to this point in the holidays and I always get reflective about things. And I don't know about you, but 
Well, I do in a way because we talk about it sometimes. What's your favorite movie? Holiday movie? Christmas mm -hmm. movie? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I love White Christmas. Okay. Um, and Home Alone, you got to watch Home Alone. It's funny. I don't care how many times you see it. It's funny. My mother's comment when we watched that in the theater together was, that's your son. That is Kevin. And, of course, his name is Kevin. Yeah. So that was a done deal. Um, and I love all the Santa Claus movies, like the Tim Allen um, Santa Claus movies. I don't know. I mean, I, I like so many. Yeah. I can't just say I have just one favorite. Okay. I really wish I still had little ones, though, here to watch Frosty and Rudolph. <laughs> because it doesn't feel like it's Christmas until you watch those. And now, you know, I have to watch them alone. <laughs> Rick and I, we actually, during this season, well, not so much Rick. I will. He'll just let me do it. But Prep and Landing is oh, one of my I wish they would come up with more of this. I know. I just said to Rick, I've got to go look on the ABC and see if it's in the countdown to Christmas, a new one. But I didn't see anything no, about a new one. I know. Oh, they are so good. They became my Rudolph with my grandkids. We watch that over and over again when they yeah. come. We got it on DVD. Yeah. And it's the coal elves and the prep and landing yes. elves. And yeah, they're good. Rick and I will do that in the mornings leading up to Christmas when we have our coffee together. We'll put prep and landing on it. We'll laugh at that every time over and over again. <laughs> that's one of my favorites. Yeah, that's a good one. But yep. It's a Wonderful Life is still one of my is it? Yeah, favorite Christmas movies with Jimmy Stewart. Mm -hmm. And then Holiday Inn. Or Holiday. Sorry, I always want to say Holiday oh, Inn because the holiday. of the original movie Holiday Inn, but Holiday with Jack Black oh, and okay. Cameron Diaz. Yeah, the Holiday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I love that one. That's good. That's one That's of my really newer good. contemporary favorites. Yes. The Holiday. Yeah. That's a fun yeah, one. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that is good. Yep. And they and like I said, those actors, um, and Kate Winslet, I can't leave her out. Yeah. I mean, that was just that was a dynamite yeah. movie when it oh, came out. That is. That's so good. <laughs> um do you have any stitchy requests for Christmas? I know you made yes. all this when we were gone. I, um, I've i asked my husband for a um, sewing machine. Oh, okay. I want a sewing machine. So that's on my, that's way up here. <laughs> um, and then we went, on my birthday, we went to Stitches Unlimited and I basically had my notes open on my phone and I was just kind of going through the store looking at patterns that maybe he could get stick in my stocking. Um, so I was taking notes and writing everything down, you know, the designer, what the pattern's called, so that when he shows up with the notes, he, he can just, whoever's working that day, you know, can you find some of these? <laughs> so um, That just, was funny, listening to her talk to herself all the way through the shop yeah, the other day. I did, yep, yep. Well, I was thinking about people looking for last minute stitchy items for friends, like if you have a friend who stitches or um, you yourself might be looking for something new. Monica Ferris writes books about a, a cross-stitch store, and it actually does knitting store too, but those are a great series of just easy reads. I love them. And they're out on audio too on iTunes. Oh. Um, really great fun. If you like to listen to a story while you stitch, yeah. it's a stitchy story. So Yeah, after you've watched Country Stitchers. Yes, yes. After your <laughs> floss tube time, you can put on your and audio. everybody else. Yes, then, yes that's right. Um, and then also, I was thinking about stuff that we've shown that was really popular, that magnifying light that mm. we clip on, mm -hmm. um, right over there, that yep. natural light. Yep. Um, that was very popular. That can be picked up at Amazon or Joann's. Um, you could do a search on it. Um, that was very popular. Yeah. And also, um, just a gift card to Amazon just about covers anybody's stitchy mm -hmm. items nowadays. Yeah. I was amazed how many times we do something, Yazzie bags. Yeah. All those things show up there. So mm -hmm. don't get too frustrated if you haven't found the perfect gift yet. Yes. Keep looking. Yes. yes. Let's All look right. at Gadget Corner. Oh, right. This week, Karen is co-hosting. And she sent a gadget. And I have actually, this is a double bang for your buck today. <laughs> because we have something else that we mentioned before, but we haven't shown it. So we'll get to that one first. And then we'll show Karen's. Um... We had someone, um, when we were doing the round robin, they were talking about the envelopes to go on the back of the pieces, remember? Yes. Well, those came in the mail this week from Terry. Wrong end, Liz. <laughs> this should be an arrow there for me. And Terry sent a selection of them that she uses at her workplace. 
and I just thought we could just show a couple of them. Yeah. This one holds business size cards. Cool. Um, it's called Hold It <laughs> by Cardinal. And they just, again, they just adhese to the back of something. And then these are the CD, DVD um, oh, yeah. disc holders. And they do the same thing. And then this yeah. is just another size um, packaging, uh, like putting your invoice on your packaging, wow. a standard size piece there. So that was what we were talking about when we were referring to something you could put on the, the paper cover or paper finish on the back of your finished pieces That's that awesome. you could put notes in about your yeah. piece. Yeah. Um, so thank you, uh, Terry, for sending those Very to cool. us. Very cool. Thank you, Terry. To share with folks about yeah. um, keeping your, your history with your piece. Mm -hmm. And boy, there's a lot of history to what we do. Mm -hmm. This is from Karen. It's called a Flex Clip Portable Copy Holder. Now, she saw this at work, of course, because mm -hmm. she uses it um, for copies. But one end, she clips onto her stitching frame or whatever she's holding her piece in and the other piece she holds her pattern wow so it just kind of comes awesome. around yeah um it's very strong that's awesome and the only thing whoops that's a holder yeah you can attach it permanently i'm going to open this up so i can get this okay. out right. um the only thing is keep your fingers out of the way i was gonna say that it's, it's very strong. very strong clip yeah and your pattern will, will not come out stick on anything <laughs> um i'll just give you an idea of the length of the the gooseneck it's about looks to be so about cool. seven inches um so you can go from your scroll frame and put your pattern in it hmm. um you can put your working copy in there that's um, awesome yeah wow. it is very awesome um and okay, cool. if you go online and you look at some of these double clamps i'm using one right now as we're doing our video because it holds our yeah. phone. Mm -hmm. um, that one I got from Natural Light, um, or Daylight, I think. Um, and those ran me, that ran me almost $40, the one that holds my phone. This is awesome. So this is a really good uh, alternative to the one that wow. I have the phone on. I know, it's very strong. It is, wow. So thank you, Karen. That's awesome, Karen. Thank you. Kensington yeah. is the name of the company. Yeah. As usual, we'll put that information in the description box um, with the video so you can link to it. And I believe she said, cool. um, she was kind enough to say Staples is a great place to go oh, to get it. Oh, okay. So that'll be one of the links we'll put on there. There you go. Another stocking stuffer. Yeah. There you go. Sweet. Gadgets and tools. Yes. Nice. Um, okay. We have another piece of finished, unfinished business. Yeah. Fun, um, fun, fun. And good timing, too, with it yes. being Christmas. Last week, we had a sponsored video by Stitching Treasures. Um, just an update. They, um, the inventory is now exhausted on the electric cord maker. The is it electric or battery? Battery. Okay. Electric. Whatever. Powered. <laughs> it's powered. And um, it is gone, and so is the grandma's... No, excuse me, the, the snowflake blue. pin keep, not the grandma's pin keep. The okay. green one okay. with the tan okay. threads is still available. Okay. The blue one with the snowflake patterns, gone. gone. Okay, all right. Good. Yep. But we just touched base with Linda on that this morning, so yes, we knew where we yes. were. But she was kind enough to have a giveaway um, for anybody who mentioned um, the word model, basically, in your comment. And this, just to remind you, is the giveaway. She has the entire thing kitted up for you. Um, so we... Have a winner. And those are available still. Yes. So the winner of the Stitching Treasures giveaway is Rebecca Reyes. 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 Yep. There you go, Rebecca. So if you can get a hold of us, again, our information will be in the drop down section of the video. Um, and I want to know if you're will... related to Samantha Reyes. She works at our UDS and she's an awesome friend of mine. Aww. Anyway, thank you and congratulations. That's awesome. That's an awesome gift. Yeah, nice time yeah. of year to get something like yes. that. Yeah. And the scissors are in it. I mean, it's everything, it's everything. start to finish. Yep. Yep. That's what she uses yep. to teach. So. Yeah, very nice. Good, good, good. Yes. All right. So I don't know if we'll see you again before Christmas. It might be between Christmas and New Year's, right? Because most probably. What are we, the 13th now? Mm-hmm. Oh, goodness. Yeah, so it won't be. 
It's all. It's just two weeks will be between the two. I know. Yeah. So, Gosh. Merry Christmas from us. Yes. Um, I hope you have a fantastic time with your family and loved ones, and just get to enjoy everything that you can possibly enjoy. Yes. Boy, can we get ourselves overwhelmed and suck all the fun right out of it. Yeah. I mean, I've done that. So, you know, I have to remember not to be a fun sucker. <laughs> Don't forget, this is about relationships and people and sharing the time and. Mm -hmm. And as usual, remember to share, share the, the joy of needlework. Work. Merry See Christmas. You. Merry Christmas.